recovery against the pre-COVID base of FY20. Consolidated revenue from operations in quarter one, we 48% of quarter one FY20 revenues, primarily led by the growth in our delivery business. Our dining segment also reported stronger recovery at 22% against nearly 3% recovery in quarter one FY21 during the first phase. We continue to operate under strict supply side restrictions like 50% capacity utilization, restrictions on operational hours, primarily dinner timings and weekend lockdowns, etc. These restrictions are slowly easing and the pace of recovery post the second wave has been much faster than the previous lockdowns. In the month of July, our consolidated revenues were 86% of corresponding pre-COVID month of FY20. With increase in revenues from our dining segment in July, the momentum from delivery has been maintained and this reinforces our belief that our delivery offering is allowing us to significantly leverage our assets by opening up an incremental business opportunity. Our reported EBITDA loss was Rs. 104 million versus a loss of Rs. 208 million in quarter 1 FY21. With focus on cost optimizations, we have reduced our operating expenses by 33% this quarter compared to the previous quarter. We also continue to remain focused on investment in our own digital platforms covering reservations, delivery, and loyalty. The share of business coming from our own digital platforms was 21.2% as on quarter 1 FY22. Specifically, the share of delivery business from our own app has increased from 3% in quarter 1 FY21 to 17% in quarter 1 FY22, led by our focus on building and growing our digital assets. We have also restarted our network expansion and added two new Bobby Creation restaurants in quarter one. An additional eight Bobby Creation restaurants are under construction, and we have a strong pipeline of future projects. With our focus on delivery, we also intend to increase our points of sale through extension kitchens so that we can reach closer to our customers and provide them with enhanced product experience. With this backdrop, we launched four extension kitchens across three cities in July. As you mentioned, last year we saw Bobby Creation transform and evolve to the needs of the customers. We are now gradually shifting to being a food services company with diversified offerings. We are constantly evaluating new growth areas and are very optimistic about the structural changes in the business which are playing out as things normalize. We remain committed to our employees and are extremely happy and proud that we have successfully vaccinated all our restaurant employees across all locations with at least one dose. And we'll continue to drive this uh, uh, with the second wave as per the prescribed timelines. So with this, I'll now open the floor for the interactive Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Sushmit Patoria from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening, uh, Rahul. Uh, congratulations to you and the team. Uh, Rahul, my first question is, you mentioned in your presentation that operating costs will be 33% lower than Q4 FI21. Uh, so if just to kind of clarify that, uh, Q4 FI21 operating cost that you're referring to is 100 crores. Is that the number, which is... Uh, so, uh, uh, Shushma, the way we have calculated is that uh, uh, we have looked at uh, our operating uh, EBITDA and uh, the uh, the reported gross margin. Uh, sorry, the, the reported EBITDA and the reported gross margin. And the difference between the two is what we compared between quarter four and quarter one. And one other thing that we adjusted is the variable cost of, uh, of the delivery business, which is uh, primarily commissions and uh, packaging cost. So mm -hmm. if you look at uh, primarily the balance uh, cost left, which are largely fixed costs, uh, which again are mostly employees, uh, some other operating costs and uh, rental costs. So those on absolute basis has come down by 33%. And you think that will remain uh, lower by 33% for the full year, correct? No, 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 no. So the, some of these obviously as uh, as we ramp up our dining oh, business, okay, okay. Uh, we'll also have to ramp up our, uh, our some of our you know employee base. Uh, and uh, there's also some waivers uh, that you could get from for quarter one, uh, you know, which might just uh, come back. So uh, this is, I think, uh, purely uh, cost optimization doing a tough quarter that we had in quarter one. Okay, okay, okay. got it. And uh, my next question, Rahul, is on, uh, you know, you also mentioned diversified menu option to provide multiple cuisines. Uh, so is this something new, which is beyond uh, the barbecue in a box and Toscana? 
No, uh, right now it is uh, only these two, uh, but okay. specifically on uh, both uh, barbecue in a box and uh, Tuscano. In barbecue nation box, we have also added a couple of more variants uh, to our uh, to our box offering. Uh, specifically, we launched uh, something called Overlord uh, non-veg box and uh, my Biryani and kebab box, uh, which has done uh, well. Uh, and on Tuscano side, uh, specifically on delivery, uh, the business has doing has been doing very good. Uh, almost thirty-four uh, percent of the business uh, came from uh, delivery in Tuscano. So it's not like you want to add any new cuisine, correct? That unless that. No, 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 no. Not, not, not correctly. And, yeah. Yeah. And and last question from me. I'll get back in the queue. Uh, Rahul is, uh, how are the economics now settling for delivery? Uh, uh, because it looks like in in this quarter, uh, it looks like the gross margins are lower, but EBITDA margin may not be very different from the usual uh, run business. So if you can just. So on the. On the it's on the delivery side, uh, you know, uh, one, your contribution margin as compared to dining is lower, right? Because you have uh, two other variants, which is packaging and uh, and commissions that you pay to aggregators and the uh, last term logistic cost, right? Uh, so that's one. Um, uh, the food cost between delivery and dining is not significantly different. Uh, maybe, maybe slightly higher, and that's by design because uh, we currently want to ensure that uh, the product which is being sold is of uh, great value to, to our guests. Uh, uh, I think the gross margin decline that we saw in quarter four versus uh, quarter one versus quarter four of last year is predominantly because of uh, our reduction in margin from our dining business. And that's also because uh, since the dining business is not yet operating at an optimal capacity, uh, your utilization of buffets, for example, is not that great. Uh, secondly, dining is right now happening mostly during weekdays and not during dinners or, or weekends, which are high realization uh, uh, you know, price points uh, for you. And uh, because of which your gross margin is slightly slightly lower. Uh, so uh, coming back to your original question of uh, delivery economics, uh, I think uh, with uh, with the increase in sales, uh, uh, we are now pretty confident that uh, whatever average sales revenue we are doing, uh, and that's the reason why we also ventured out on uh, on extension kitchens. That uh, at these sales number and with these contribution margins, uh, and after paying off some additional cost of uh, say rentals or electricity and uh, and manpower in these extension kitchens. Uh, we would be definitely doing, uh, you know, early double digit data margins, which obviously will improve as your sales further go up. So that's the that's the way economics is working out on on delivery. Got it. So just to clarify, you're saying double digit data margins on uh, even the standalone extension counters for delivery, yes. correct? Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Raul. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Anyone who wish to ask a question at this time, they may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Pratesh Sheda from Lucky Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir, uh, in the new scheme of things, uh, you know, with the delivery, uh, what is the throughput per store uh, which we should look at, uh, you know, when uh, it's a fairly normal business environment? And uh, how does that throughput per store uh, change vis-a-vis -vis earlier? So uh, look, there are a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, noise and numbers because at some times you only delivery and you don't have dining. But uh, if I look at only quarter one performance, uh, we had uh, delivered around 56 crores of uh, of delivery uh, revenues on a base of approximately 160 outlet doing that, which translates to I think broadly uh, some one point uh, so 12 to and a half uh, lakh rupees uh, of uh, of monthly numbers. Uh, which is approximately 1.5 crores of delivery business. Uh, now, uh, uh, our dining business, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, uh, on average, we used to do approximately uh, uh, six crores of of revenue per outlet. Uh, and now, uh, as our delivery is scaling up, uh, which has done well during quarter four last year, it has done uh, you know, even better in quarter one this year. But our dining business was not there. So I think uh, we'll have to wait for for the normalized uh, you know, period. But uh, my belief is that uh, once situation normalizes, uh, I don't see any reason why dining will not come back to its original uh, uh, base. And delivery, uh, as we always maintain, that uh, is an incremental business for us. Uh, and and this was also reinforced in the month of July, when despite the fact that our dining uh, started to pick up, our deliveries we didn't see it going down. Uh, so uh, I think overall, uh, in a normalized scenario, my belief is that both dining and delivery should play well. So uh, we head to something like a seven and a half crore per store. Uh, 
uh, at that level uh, what can be what should be the ebitda margin of the uh, at the at the company level pre ns so uh, uh, look it's all uh, futuristic right now but uh, if you look at uh, our uh, pre pandemic uh, ebitda margins on dine in business uh, at store level we used to do around 21 22% and on incremental delivery business we'll do around similar margins uh, uh so overall its store level margins uh, on an on a percentage number should be same 21 22% and then uh, your back end cost which is around uh, 5 to 6 now on larger base it might tend towards 5 then 6 so uh, blended margins you know uh, should should come to around around 15% okay and uh, uh sir i could understand your uh, kitchens which you are talking about in three cities so is that we are now incrementally also setting up cloud kitchens in three cities uh, which is what you are hinting at yes so uh, uh, the reason for doing this is that if you look at uh, our uh, larger markets uh, metro cities like uh, uh, you know delhi bombay bangalore and, and these larger metro cities uh, we are only doing uh, delivery from our barbecue nation kitchen uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, less number in these cities right so bombay for example has around 15 outlets only and uh, which restricts our ability to serve a larger market in, in this metro market where demand is higher so, uh, so uh, what we are doing is uh, setting up small extension kitchens uh, which is going going closer to your customer so that uh, one their customer experience also will will be better and uh, your delivery outreach will go go higher uh, this will always be linked to one uh, uh, one mother kitchen um, and as of now we are uh, we have four which are which are launched uh, we'll watch the performance we'll see what are the what are changes on the ground and then based on that uh, uh, decided on uh, on taking it up forward in future so these four kitchens have been launched in the four metro cities including bombay is what you have started with yes so there are okay. three cities uh, uh but one is bombay yeah. and what is the capex that you have put in these kitchen so these are broadly uh, one tenth of what we put in bobby creation outlet overall so uh, around 25 to 30 lakh rupees per kitchen okay does it also mean that some of the di- uh, delivery business from the store uh, get serviced from these kitchens so uh, if i am not double counting no so uh, uh, i guess uh, this is uh, planned in a manner that uh, you know we don't over cannibalize or cannibalize your existing business from the existing uh, you know dining outlet so the idea is to uh, to reach a wider set of of your target customers okay and my last question is uh, you mentioned that we have started with store addition you know you added two in the quarter one so incrementally what is our uh, store addition plan and do we need to revisit uh, any of the existing stores so uh, uh, we targeted to open 20 outlets this year uh, out of which uh, we could only open two because also uh, quarter one was uh, you know mostly pandemic uh, period uh, post that uh, we have a strong pipeline of under construction projects uh, i guess based on uh, how we uh, how we also convert the the balanced pipeline of sites uh, we might revisit our, our target, uh, but as we've always maintained, uh, uh, what we look for inside is the market potential and uh, and the rental uh, deals that are coming through. Uh, as long as uh, it looks attractive, uh, we will do that. Okay. Uh, just a clarification, uh, you mentioned uh, that you know uh, earlier format uh, of uh, your business operations got at about 15% EBITDA margin when. Uh, delivery was not uh, so prevalent and now when you are adding about 1 and a half crore of throughput on the existing store it means that the incremental 1 and a half crore uh, gross profit should flow down to your ebitda uh, is that the assessment correct uh, and what is the differential uh, contribution margin between dining and uh, delivery so when you when i say contribution so obviously in dining delivery we need to then consider the RM cost, commissions, and the delivery cost. Uh, whereas in case of uh, dining, it, it it will include the store opex cost, which is variable, and uh, you know the RM cost. So, what is the differential uh, there? So, uh, our blended uh, uh, gross margin uh, last quarter, when we had uh, full dining operational, practically uh, was around uh, 67 crore, uh, 67 percent. Uh, Pre-pandemic, uh, also we used to do a gross margin of around uh, 66%. Uh, 
so mm-hmm. on the food cost side, uh, I don't see much uh, difference. Uh, the other two commissions and packaging costs is, is incrementally added uh, uh, to that. But overall, uh, at a blended level, uh, we should still maintain uh, a 21% uh, uh, store level margins uh, in those uh, uh, restaurants. Despite 6 crore uh, throughput going to 7 and a half? Yes, because as you rightly said, the contribution margin plus uh, when you are doing delivery, you would also need to, and with the scaled up delivery business, you also need to add uh, add few more employees so that you get the dedicated focus and uh, and delivery product which is uh, uh, which is up to the mass worker for the customer experience. Okay, thank you very much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Any participants who wish to ask a question, please press star and one. The next question is in the line of Percy Pantaki from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, Rahul. Uh, just wanted to understand, uh, uh, adjusted for India's accounting, what would be the margins of the international business this quarter? So we have maintained uh, double-digit sector margins there also uh, in international business this quarter also. Okay. And uh, same thing, if you can give an idea for Toscano, how much would be the, uh, rather than margins, the uh, absolute rupees million loss or something? Uh, we had... Uh, uh, so the business is uh, small right now. Uh, we, I think we had uh, broadly uh, one and a half uh, to around 1.75 crore loss at a better level. That's also because uh, uh, like uh, our India business, a uh, large part of their uh, dining business was closed. And on delivery business, they also grew uh, pretty much in, in line with uh, what we have done in barbecue nation. Right, right. And uh, another question I had was, see, you're opening these uh, uh, extension kitchens, which will be for uh, delivery. But uh, uh, any thoughts on uh, having a, a, a delivery come dine-in uh, business, which is not a proper full 90-minute lunch or dinner kind of occasion, but if someone just wants to have a snack, maybe a plate of kebabs, something like that to open a very uh, sort of small uh, square feet, uh, let's say 1,000 square feet kind of uh, place, which will uh, have maybe 15, 20, 25 seaters who can just come and have a snack, sort of a QSR kind of uh, take on the Indian cuisine. Have you given any thought on some format like that? So, uh, 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 yes, we keep looking at various formats. And you know, I think that's the evaluation of UBQ. That's the evaluation of Barbecue Net Box, and uh, 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 and we keep evaluating few of them. Uh, but uh, some of them are really early stage. To I think uh, I think talk to uh, talk to this group. Uh, like last time, also uh, you know we mentioned uh, we might look at extension kitchens, and we were constantly evaluating that uh, the economics and this and this quarter you know uh, since we were launched four, uh, we just came out in for that, but. Uh, yes, we are evaluating something like that, but you know it is still work in progress, and you know we don't know uh, when this will come out because it is still not in a format that we can go ahead and launch something. Sure. Uh, next question I had is: see, pre pre pandemic, you had a six crore kind of uh, uh, dine in sale. Uh, now, uh, uh, as you open more stores, uh, obviously for any retail format, any restaurant format the early stores will be the cream of the opportunity, uh, which will have very high sales per store, et cetera. And as you then open newer stores, maybe you are going a little bit down the ladder in terms of uh, opportunity. That, that's what I think. I don't know. You can correct me if my thought process is wrong. So what I'm trying to ask is after uh, the COVID situation is fully normal and let's say you add another 50, 60 stores over the next two years, uh, do you think that your dining component uh, on a sales uh, of a, sorry dining sales per store will come back to the six uh, crore level, or do you think it will be lower than that? But your overall sales per store will still be higher because of the addition of delivery. So uh, let's look at uh, dining uh, separately first. Uh, uh, you know we uh, we have always maintained that uh, the opportunity of more dining stores in metro markets are still very large. Like also, uh, you know, places like Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, all these are, you know, less than uh, 15 or, or 20 outlets in these cities, and this can grow further. And you know, if you look at our current pipeline, uh, uh, so between the two that we open in quarter one and the eight that we under construction, 
Uh, I would say seven of these are uh, in metro and uh, tier one markets. Uh, right now, three are in tier two, tier three markets. So, uh, and advantage of uh, these larger markets uh, is that uh, your brand is known and uh, uh, and the maturity profile of these outlets are faster. Uh, that's one. Uh, secondly, if you look at our growth uh, in number of outlets uh, 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 just before the pandemic, last three years. Uh, you'll see that uh, almost 40% uh, uh, of the outlets are less than three years old, right? And those themselves are not matured uh, to a uh, uh, to a large extent. And then pandemic happened, so so that story is not playing out, right? Uh, but overall, my belief is that uh, uh, a six crore average number, uh, uh, I think, should not come down uh, uh, post pandemic. Uh, and to some extent, I think uh, if there's also a push from the industry about. Uh, uh, about growth in dining post pandemic that also should help us so at least uh, post uh, uh, post this uh, this current situation uh, i i don't see any reason why for at least a couple of years uh, we should worry about uh, average coming down on pure dining business and then obviously the, the delivery is incremental for us sure sure so what you are saying is that once the disruptions are completely 100% gone then your uh, dining will revert to a 6 crore per store kind of a number Yes, it should. I don't think reason why it should uh, not. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's all from me. Thanks, Rahul, and all the best. Thank you, Pasi. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Parikshit Shah from Euro Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Rahul. Uh, just continuing on the previous question um, on the diamond outlets, you know, you mentioned. Uh, that there is enough potential in metro tier ones where you know bulk of road are still being constructed. Um, and earlier you also spoke about uh, you're going to like wait and watch on these extension kitchens, the floor that you've built so far. I'm just wondering, longer term, do, does the success the you are speaking with has put your call on hold? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I can hear you. Yeah. No, I was just wondering, so longer term. Uh, yeah, would the success of the extension kitchen sort of tone down your store edition ambition? I'm just wondering if, you know, is there a path where you decide to go down one path rather than the other, or is it, are they always going to be like, you know, coexisting that like there will always need to be X number of dining outlets needed to support certain extension kitchens? So, uh, uh, my belief is that uh, it should coexist uh, uh, because the dining outlets are primarily serving uh, the dining uh, and the celebration need of our guests, uh, which is our core, uh, uh, you know, a brand and also a very strong uh, a brand which attracts, uh, uh, I think, good football. So we will continue to do a dining, and uh, if uh, in the particular area dining has a potential, we'll do that. Even though we have, say, an extension kitchen which is within uh, one kilometer of that radius. Uh, uh, so I think both are different uh, uh, target markets. Uh, if delivery was not there, then uh, our dining business still had uh, very strong uh, return profiles, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, right? So uh, we mm -hmm. evaluate uh, a new site uh, based on the potential of the dining business. And if uh, that can also become an additional point of sale for delivery business, uh, that's anyway incremental, right? Uh, and the delivery business is then uh, evaluated on the merit of uh, of what is the demand that I'm uh, that I'm projecting in that particular uh, trade area. And do we have yes. enough points to, to service that? So uh, uh, we are not thinking in terms of if there is extension kitchen, don't open dining, or if there's dining, don't open extension kitchen. No, it all depends upon what is the current capacity. Uh, are you able to service your guests better? And can you extend your radius uh, in that particular trade area and service more and have one or two extension kitchen rather than just relying it from your main dining business? Okay, okay, fair enough. And the other question I had, I think in your opening comments, you mentioned uh, the delivery from your own app has gone up to 17% uh, versus 3%, I think a year ago, uh, if I'm not wrong, if I got the numbers right. Uh, just wondering how, how are you driving this? Is there, a, uh, you know, is there a pricing differential if one were to order from your own app versus the aggregator? Uh, is there more discounting? Just wondering, you know, what you're doing to drive this? Because obviously this will be very critical to the margin profile of the delivery business. Yes, so uh, 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 it has gone up from 3 to 17. Uh, you got that right. Uh, uh, no, the, the pricing is not different between the two uh, platforms. Uh, the only thing that we don't do in our platform is we don't charge, uh, uh, you know, delivery fee with some of the aggregators charge, but that's uh, uh, that's small. 
Uh, what we are seeing is that uh, our uh, our previous strategy of a dining customer earning loyalty points, uh, smile points, and then leading your delivery is is playing out pretty well. And we are seeing a large mm. number of redemption on our own platform, uh, which is also have uh, smile redemptions, uh, right? Uh, and uh, and that is something which is uh, which is our own core customers. And the repeat numbers mm -hmm. in our own app is also uh, you know very strong. Uh, uh, Yes, we did mention this number of 3 and 17, but uh, we have to still see how this stabilizes because the delivery business is still growing uh, at a really fast pace, right? And the right. that are coming is also given by, uh, I would say, uh, you know, industry numbers growing while our numbers are, are uh, you know, I'm assuming better than industry. Uh, but uh, I would wait for some more time to see how this stabilizes and not jump into saying that our own, uh, you know, uh, uh, own app business is, has a far superior margin profile. I think the focus right now is to ensure that uh, your guests, uh, your customers like your product and uh, you tap that uh, that Indian cuisine market uh, that you always wanted to tap on uh, on the delivery side, right? Uh, and in that yeah. situation, even if, uh, you know, uh, your margins are, are a couple of percentage points here or there, it's okay for, for a time being, right? So that's the broad thought that we have. Uh, but uh, uh, to give it short, I think we're extremely happy with the way uh, our guests and our customers have adopted uh, our own app, right? And uh, now we are also thinking about uh, how do we, we further uh, invest in uh, scaling up our digital capabilities. Okay, okay, fair enough. Thanks a lot and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Sushmit Patodia from Motita Noswan. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for letting me ask uh, questions again. Uh, first question, uh, uh, Rahul, is uh, any premium properties that you've been able to buy in this last few months? So by premium, you mean uh, high rental properties let's, that is now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say BKC or, you know, those kind of uh, premium. Yes, uh, we have a couple of sites in uh, in Bombay, which uh, uh, which otherwise, uh, you know, we're not making sense in terms of rentals. Right. So you were able to get them? Yes. They're under construction right now. Oh, great, great. All right. Uh, the second is, uh, could you tell us how much was the cash burn in quarter one? So, uh, adjusted for uh, uh, India, uh, we had uh, consolidated cash burn of around 35 crores. 35 crores. And uh, just my last question, uh, uh, Rahul is, uh, you know, one of the things that I had raised earlier as well, there is a significant difference in the Zomato rating of barbecue nation delivery and dining in a few, you know, whenever you open a few restaurants. Any thoughts on that? Like, for example, in some restaurants, the difference is as much as 3.5 and 4.5. So, you know, can that dilute the brand? Uh, you know, have you thought about this? So, uh, so certainly, yes, we have thought about it. Uh, our dining is, uh, I would say, a 15-year-old uh, you know, brand, and we have maintained that uh, excitement, uh, customer excitement, and, and stabilized at 4.5. Uh, on delivery side, uh, I would say it's uh, uh, almost, uh, you know, large part of business comes from barbecue in a box, which is uh, just one-year-old product, and we are constantly improving on that. And we're also seeing that reflected in our ratings. So at a blended level, our ratings, which were uh, approximately... Uh, I would say 3.4, uh, uh, six, eight months back, is now trending towards uh, 3.8. So there is gradual improvement happening on that. Uh, and at the back end also, we are we are constantly working on, uh, you know, uh, menu rationalization, you know, some products which don't do well on delivery, uh, you know, some which uh, we are changing our, our packaging at times. Uh, so those are constantly happening. And uh, the way, uh, despite the business increasing by almost, uh, you know, uh, 7, 8x, uh, uh, over these eight nine months, our ratings have only improved. Right, so that gives me a lot of comfort. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks again. Thanks, Smith. Thank you. Participants, please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Deepak, as an indigenous investor. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. My question is around the delivery business. What is the average ticket size of delivery, sir? You mean the average transaction size? Yes, right, right. Yeah, so uh, it's approximately 650 rupees. 
six fifty. Yeah. Okay, and my second question is around <coughs> on partnering with some other apps such as phone pay or zomato if you see in zomato you know burger king is promoting their uh, stores or delivery so is there any strategic tie up planning or anything in pipeline so it's a continuous uh, you know uh, dialogue and discussions that we keep having with our educator partners and uh, you know based on various considerations uh, of uh, of marketing budgets uh, their own availability of uh, of space in their app Uh, our uh, our marketing team uh, uh, keep promoting uh, 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 those uh, offers there. Okay, sir. And my last question is around the cloud kitchen. So, for cloud kitchen, uh, what is the uh, average, you know, uh, monthly revenue you are expecting from cloud kitchens? So, uh, uh, Deepak, it's very young. We just started in the month of July. and uh, yes, i would say uh, if you look at uh, uh, look at the average sale uh, of each restaurant it is uh, approximately 12 lakh rupees uh, uh, based on the existing kitchens that they're doing so uh, let's see how it evolves but uh, uh, right now it's a little commit on uh, on what numbers we are we are looking at on okay thank you so much sir and best wishes thank you dikon Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Pritesh Cheda from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have a follow-up question. Uh, after uh, you know putting up the capex for two point, let's say two and a half, two point seven crore per store. Uh, what is the replacement needs or maintenance needs of the store? And uh, if you could give us uh, uh, how uh, is that maintenance needs being spent out or accounted in the P and L or the balance sheet? So there are some regular uh, maintenance uh, 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 that which uh, like AMC costs and all which get charged to the PNL uh, cost, and if there are any uh, capex items like uh, replacement of any kitchen equipment or replacement of any AC equipment, uh, which is capital in nature, then uh, that that gets uh, uh, capitalized uh, in our business. And uh, typically, we have seen that uh, on average we spend. Almost five lakh rupees uh, per outlet uh, per year, uh, blended uh, in the uh, in the company for maintenance uh, related capex work. And that's accounted in the P and L. No, this is uh, capex related, which is uh, balance sheet. So you spend five lakh rupees. So uh, for blended yeah. outlets, you would spend uh, approximately five crores a year. Yeah. So on per outlet basis, five lakh rupees is spent every year, and that is capitalized. And uh, do we have uh, so this kitchen equipment which comes let's say one thing so uh, any major overhauling of the store which comes let's say one thing seven eight year or it's a regular five lakh which is sufficient enough for the uh, for the life of the store? So oh, it's a uh, five is sufficient and that's what uh, we have looked at uh, our data based on last uh, five six years. Uh, also. Uh, Uh, what happens is it all depends on uh, how much is the utilization of that store, right? So our high-performing stores, uh, you know, might uh, need uh, some higher maintenance, but uh, some of the low-throughput stores uh, would need lower maintenance. Uh, but blended numbers that I'm giving you is, uh, uh, is the overall portfolio number uh, based on experience in the past. And this includes the kitchen equipment change also. Yeah, yeah, this is everything. This is the entire, even if it's furniture or anything which is. Uh, so smaller furniture ones are mostly uh, charged off to PNL because they are smaller ticket items, uh, but larger ticket items are, are capitalized, which is uh, capex in nature, which is in line with our accounting policies. And uh, uh, at what run rate do you depreciate the 2.7 crore that you have invested in a store? And this would include the rental deposit, or it will not include the rental deposit? So this doesn't include the rental deposit. Uh, this doesn't include the rental deposit, and the depreciation is uh, during the useful life of assets, or the uh, or the defined uh, uh, straight line method uh, uh, prescribed rates in the Companies Act. It's fair to assume that this whole investment is depreciated in the five years, next five years, once we invested in. No, no, our useful life is uh, approximately nine to twelve years. Our lease terms are are in fact a uh, twelve uh, years average. Okay. 
And what is the deposit amount uh, uh, rough which you could uh, for the store? Uh, between uh, in terms of between three to six months, there are, there are different deals at different sides, but uh, max is six, and uh, you know minimum is uh, uh, can go as low as one or two months. But on per store, three to four months. On per store, what it will work out to? In terms of absolute number, or in terms of uh, absolute number, absolute number. Uh, difficult to say because our rentals in metro markets and tier two markets are very different. Uh, I think it's better to look at uh, average uh, per uh, of the uh, uh, number of months uh, of around three to four months. So on a per store basis, uh, just try and give a number to you. So uh, max around 20 lakhs. Okay, okay. So your basically your capex is about let's say uh, three crores per store. So we don't look at it that way, but uh, yes, if you add other things and assume that uh, deposit is not coming back, uh, yes, it's three crores. Yeah, but let's uh, let's any case invested in two. So three crores per store, you, you are revenue generation of about seven crore as of now looks like seven, seven and a half crore. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Niket Shah from Motilal as well. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Rahul, just two questions. First, on growth, uh, uh, and maybe this is not the right quarter, uh, or within delivery, if you can just give us some sense of how much of the growth is coming from the existing customers versus new customers. So, look, uh, uh, we get uh, also a large part of business from aggregators, right, where uh, we don't get the data. So, it's very difficult for me to give a number there. But on our own app business, uh, we are uh, we are seeing repeats uh, almost every uh, every three months uh, uh, from our customers. Every so would would be sixty percent of your revenues in uh, delivery is from existing customers, or seventy percent? Uh, yeah, but, but uh, if you look, we're also growing, right? So uh, yeah, that uh, repeat rates is very difficult to calculate right now. But uh, uh, what you can do is uh, look at these numbers and maybe uh, come back to you separately. Sure. And the second question was on the delivery part of the business. Is that done by, I mean, wherever there's an aggregator, the aggregator does the delivery or, or you have your, uh, you have the delivery guys on your payroll to do it? No, aggregators do the delivery. Sorry? For their, I... for their business, aggregators does the delivery. We don't, we don't fulfill that. And for the one which directly comes to your app, you do it? Uh, partially we do, partially we also tied up with third-party logistics providers. Okay, and any thoughts on changing the model to something more what the way Jubilant does, uh, or uh, you you would like to keep the way it is? So, so uh, it will evolve, uh, like it has been evolving for last, uh, I think, five, six quarters. Uh, uh, we'll see uh, what is the throughput, uh, whether the delivery by economics makes sense. Uh, for Jubilant, it makes sense given their higher volume. And our volumes right now maybe it's present. So you know it's it's a evolving game. You know we will try with few. We'll not keep in all. I, I don't have an answer right now. But there's constant working done on on various models. Uh, we already have few delivery boys, right? Uh, so so that's ongoing. But that's all dependent on on how the business scales up and what is the economics of a delivery boy uh, in your own setup. Got it. And uh, one more question, if I may squeeze in on the rating part of it, which my colleague also asked. Uh, so just wanted to know. Uh, on the app, you rightly said it's 3.8, but we see a stark difference, right? So either there are people at five and either there are people at one. Uh, what is the major uh, grievance that people who are rating at one uh, have, essentially? Is it with the product? Is it with the packaging? Is it with, I mean, what is the uh, complaint that they have, essentially? So most of the time, uh, it is about uh, cold food. Uh, uh, I, we don't we have seen much comment on packaging. Uh, we have not seen much comment on, on food, but... Uh, uh, most of the time, it is it is on, on cold food, and that's when uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the view on uh, how do you repackage it in a manner, how do you come closer to the customer so that the, the delivery time overall is, is reduces. Uh, those things are, are are working on. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you so much. Uh, also, on rating, uh, the rating from our own app are are upwards of four, right? So uh, it 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 is uh, there are different channels on which the demand is serviced. So I'm not worried about uh, about ratings. I'm only seeing uh, it improving over last uh, two three quarters. 
uh, despite the growth in our overall uh, uh, sales numbers. Sure, sure, perfect, perfect. Sir. Thank you so much, and I'll come back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rafula, as an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, Rahul. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first is, um, uh, uh, can we, uh, do you have any, any plans to leverage the app with uh, Jubilant? Uh, no, very early to comment on those uh, lines, sir. Because uh, if you look from a customer perspective, I mean, he will end up having so many apps uh, for every time he wants to order a separate food. So uh, eventually, a uh, lot of people are talking super app and all those things. So uh, the standalone apps, uh, how scalable they are? That is my larger question. Okay, yes, uh, uh, you can argue that, but uh, uh, our belief is a bit different. Uh, I think India is a very large market. Uh, both dining and delivery are very, very underpenetrated. The share of organized market is very small, and we are living this on a daily basis, right? And that's why some of these numbers that we see uh, is what it is. Our own app uh, downloads are uh, are going up. Uh, we are currently approximately three million downloads on the app, uh, despite the fact, and we we are adding almost a lakh download uh, every month, despite the fact that the dining business was not there, right? So uh, I think, uh, 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 yes, it might feel that by which people have multiple apps, but uh, some of the, uh, I think some of the levels of brand uh, uh, have been doing that constantly, right? And uh, uh, given the repeat that we have uh, between both dining, delivery, and, uh, and the loyalty program, uh, I think it makes sense and it provides a good uh, value proposition for the customers. Uh, are, we, are we at a level that uh, some of the other uh, larger companies or food tech companies are? No, but... Uh, but can we grow at a at a larger uh, pace than industry? I think yes, uh, that can happen, right? So I'm looking from that perspective, sir. Okay, okay. And my second question is uh, uh, regarding the fundraising plans you have. What is the idea behind that? Uh, look, so uh, uh, historically, we have not uh, not raised a lot of capital to grow this business, right? Uh, if I look at cumulatively 15 years, we have raised uh, approximately 450 odd crores. Uh, out of which, uh, uh, you know, on net basis, uh, paying all the debt that we have, we have cash of around 40, 50 crores. Uh, so overall, it's only 400 crores that we have raised. Uh, out of which 200, uh, you know, if you have known our business uh, in the past, uh, we would have spent on uh, acquisitions and investments like international, Johnny Rockets, Cascano, all these. So frankly, this Bobby Nation business is built only on 200 crores. And uh, whatever expansion that we have done in our network is all flowing from the operating cash that we generate on it on an annual basis or a quarterly basis, right? Uh, during pandemic, uh, obviously that has been impacted uh, because of the restrictions of of Daniel, and that has led to uh, uh, some operating losses uh, also in this quarter. So we have also done operating losses in the in the first half of last year, though we recouped a large part of that in H2, right? So uh, uh, our idea is that. Uh, 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 there is no point in uh, in uh, stopping the growth. Uh, uh, so you should have some capital for growth. Uh, and uh, and even though you have uh, you know a couple of quarters of uh, of, of, uh, of not optimal operating performance, uh, your balance sheet should be strong enough to have adequate cash to to take care of that. And that's the prime idea of uh, of raising capital. Uh, when we did our IPO, uh, we did it for a specific purpose of repayment of debt. And a small portion was also for capex, uh, but at that point of time we could not have, uh, you know, budgeted for second wave, right? And then second wave came, so it's better that uh, you have a stronger balance sheet and then you don't compromise on on growth opportunities, be it in, in your core dining business or be it in your delivery business. Okay, thanks, 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 Rahul. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Boda from Nippon India IIF. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi Rahul. Uh, thanks for doing the also few questions. First is, uh, you know, if if you could probably help me understand, you know, uh, what percent of the network is now open? So uh, uh, we would have approximately seventy percent of our outlets operational. Uh, but when I say seventy percent, some of these are not operating beyond uh, four p.m. Some not operating beyond nine p.m. Some are closed on uh, on Sundays. Uh, there is no cons uh, consistent rule across the country, and we are present over 80, 80 cities, and you know uh, uh, the rules change by districts also. So, how have you taken this? When you say recovery is 61% in July, how do you tabulate that? 
so uh, when you say 61 percent, uh, we have taken the revenue of the company, consolidated revenue. Uh, so 61 percent, it is it is 86 percent in July, right? It is. It is. So dine-in. When I'm looking at only dine in, let's say dine in. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So dine in. So we have taken dine in revenues of July 19, which is uh, which is FI 20, uh, and compared this with uh, with 42 crores that we did in dine in in July 21. So that's all. So there will be full day versus 4 p.m. with uh, with the same 70 percent outlet open. Yes. 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 So the uh, that is how it is, right? Number the dining number in the month of July 19 was 421 divided by 0.61, which is 69 crores, which is the yes, so, full operation. Yeah. So let's say if the store was open full day, you, uh, you know you, your revenue run rate would have reached where you where you were before. That's a fair understanding. Yes, uh, we should we should be doing that. Okay. So uh, you know two three more questions if I can. First is let's say on the rental negotiation, have you done anything on the rental negotiation part? Let's say for the full year. So uh, we are in constant touch. Uh, we have got some waivers uh, for quarter one, and uh, we are also discussing them for uh, subsequent quarters. It is again very specific based on uh, what are the lockdown rules, uh, you know, uh, what sort of uh, capacity we are operating at. Uh, so those discussions are going, and we are getting the you know some rental waivers from our partners. So any broad number, let's say at, uh, at company level, is there a number, let's say 5%, 10%? Uh, I guess uh, early to say that uh, we are still in the midst of some negotiations with, with partners, so uh, it won't be appropriate to give a number right now. Okay, and two more questions. First is on pricing action. Have you t- taken any menu pricing increase? Very marginal, a uh, couple of percentage points uh, uh, in both uh, dine-in and delivery. Okay, and uh, one last one. So internally, do you do you look at uh, let let's say this matrix on a square feet level, or you look at it everything on store level only? No, we look at it on store level. Uh, we don't look at it at uh, at square feet level. I think uh, when we uh, our our philosophy on rentals are uh, just when you're going inside, uh, you don't overpay and try and uh, uh, try and come up with a number which works both for your landlord and for your business, right? Uh, that has been our philosophy right from beginning. Okay, got it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Prakash Kapadia from Aniveth Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. I have, you know, just one question. How large is, you know, the a la carte UBQ brand and how easy or how difficult is it to scale given that, you know, you can do much more and product punches can be far quicker and better in that brand. So, uh, uh, of our total business on delivery, around 70% comes from barbecue in a box and the balance comes from uh, UBQ a la carte. Uh, so that's around so 20%. 30%, of, yeah. Okay. So, almost uh, 6 crore per month on the current numbers, right? Yeah, okay. And from a uh, you know, scale perspective, is there focus to grow that? Is it positioned towards mid markets? What is the positioning and how easy or difficult is it to scale? Because I'm guessing, you know, after a BBQ box, people will not maybe, you know, try and repeat it in a certain point of time. So is that cross selling happening on the app? Is there a focus to scale that? Or not a focus area? I think it come. So, uh, uh, there are two things there. One, along with your uh, 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 barbecue in a box, you also get some a la carte orders. Uh, that's one. Uh, secondly, uh, a la carte orders also come in uh, at a uh, at a single meal price point uh, perspective, right? So, a barbecue in a box is pretty much good enough for two people, and that's the feedback that we're getting from our customers. And when there is there is a single uh, you know a la carte uh, uh, consumer. Uh, that's when he prefers uh, uh, barbecue, uh, uh, ubiquitous offering. And some of our signature dish, uh, 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 you know, like your uh, uh, spice potatoes uh, or your uh, American corns, so they they do very well on on a la carte uh, uh, business. So uh, I think the positioning is more about uh, uh, one specific item that I want to have uh, in the Indian cuisine segment, be it a kebab or be it a, be it a starter. Uh, I would order, uh, you know, from that. But otherwise, if I'm if I'm ordering for a uh, for a group of people, uh, uh, then I largely go with uh, barbecue in a box with an additional 
uh, a la carte offering from uh, UBQ. Okay, and and is the a la carte you towards Metro or not necessary? No, not necessary. It is uh, it is pretty much similar for fine. Oh, fine. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal Punmia from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So uh, I have a very small question uh, in terms of understanding the product a little better. Uh, the question is related to uh, uh, the kind of uh, menu items we have. Uh, are those menu items made entirely from scratch or do we also have arrangements with companies in terms of getting uh, ready to cook or ready made gravy sauces, uh, etc. And if not, uh, can we uh, basically uh, in the future try to have such arrangements which will, will basically help your uh, uh, in management of inventory in a much better way? Are we open to that uh, as a company going forward? So uh, we have been driving uh, standardization of our uh, of our inputs uh, raw materials uh, over the last two years, and a large part of portfolio is already moved towards uh, 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 towards that standardized portfolio, wherein uh, you know you get the base uh, gravies and base marinades uh, all done, and they're finished at the outlets, and a very small percentage of those are still uh, you know uh, under R&D stage. So uh, okay. yes, uh, to answer your question, we are moving to that direction anyway. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, even Jubilant has a uh, product uh, which is basically your Chinese sauces or even uh, uh, North Indian gravies. Uh, are those also a part of your portfolio, or is there is there some other players uh, who, who who you you would be venturing uh, with? So we evaluate uh, all options available in the market, and uh, based on uh, based on the pricing, quality, our need, you know, what the supply can supply, we take the best one which is possible. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be the last question for today. On behalf of Ambit Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.